This presentation is on character evidence. Students find the character evidence rules very tricky and they often have trouble spotting a character evidence issue. My goal with this video is to give you an overview of what character evidence is, the different ways in which it is categorized and regulated, and a sense of how the key rules 404 and 405 fit together. Please be sure to read the rules and the assignment before watching the video. Under the evidence rules, the term character or trait of character refers to a propensity to behave in a particular way. In other words, when we talk about character evidence, we mean evidence that a person has a tendency or a propensity to act in, this, in a particular way. These propensities can be general or specific. For example, the rules would cover evidence showing that Jane has a propensity to steal, Frank is prone to be violent, Joan has a tendency to lie, Greg has a propensity to forget things, Tom has a propensity to sell drugs, or Susie tends to be careless. There are three different ways to tell the jury about uh, a person's character trait, that is, their propensity to act in a particular way. We looked at these different forms of proof when we covered impeachment, but let's review. First, you could call a witness to testify about her opinion of the person. For example, a witness could testify, I know Susie, and she is a careless person. Second, you could call a witness to testify about the person's reputation. So your witness could testify, I work with Susie, and everybody thinks that Susie is a careless person. Third, you could use specific instances of conduct that demonstrate the propensity. In other words, specific examples. So your witness could testify, or you could introduce documents that show Susie caused six car accidents last year. The character, rule, uh, the character rules are divided up based on these forms of proof. As a practical matter, Rule 404A governs use of opinion and reputation evidence about character, and Rule 404B governs the use of specific examples, specific past acts, that show character. We'll return to this towards the end of the video. It's helpful to divide uh, character evidence into four categories. One, category 1, proof of a witness's propensity to lie or tell the truth. 2, proof of character or reputation as elements. 3, proof of conduct by propensity. And 4, proof of, of other acts for non-propensity purposes. Let's look at how each one of these categories involves the use of character or propensity evidence. Category 1 is for proof of a witness's propensity to lie or tell the truth. We've seen this already when we did uh, the impeachment rules 608 and 609, but let's look at it again. Okay, we start with evidence that the witness is dishonest. This could be based on her reputation, on someone's opinion, or on specific examples. The impeaching lawyer uses that to suggest that the witness has a dishonest character or a propensity to lie and therefore is more likely lying on the witness stand. Okay, again, this is governed by rules 608 and 609. Our second category is for, for uh, the unusual situation where a character trait or reputation is an actual element of the claim or charge. In a few types of cases, such as defamation, a party must actually prove the character trait itself. Defamation is a good example. Let's say the plaintiff brings a libel action against the defendant, claiming that the defendant falsely said that the plaintiff is a miser. This requires the plaintiff to prove that the statement was false, that the plaintiff is not a miser. In other words, the plaintiff is generous. That makes the character trait of generosity an element that must be proved. Introduction of evidence that the plaintiff has a reputation for being philanthropic tends to prove that he is philanthropic. This is a very narrow category that arises in a very limited set of cases. It's governed by Rule 405B and we'll talk about it in more detail in class. Our third category is for proof of conduct by propensity. Let's say that the defendant is charged with assault. 
the prosecution has evidence that the defendant is violent. And remember, this evidence could be in the form of a witness's opinion, a witness's description of the defendant's reputation for violence, or a witness's description of past examples of the defendant behaving in a violent manner. If that evidence is offered to suggest to the jury that the defendant has a propensity to be violent or a propensity to assault people, and therefore it is more likely that the defendant assaulted the victim on this occasion, the prosecution is using a propensity inference. The prosecutor is saying he has been he is, our defendant has been violent in the past and that makes it more likely that he was violent on this particular occasion. This use of conduct to prove propensity is governed by Rule 404. And that brings us to our fourth category. This is for proof of other acts for non-propensity purposes. Rule 404, like many of the other rules we've looked at, has an other purposes clause. The rule prohibits using specific examples of a person's behavior to show propensity, but it allows the proponent to use specific examples for other non-propensity purposes. For example, let's say the defendant is charged with stealing money from a sophisticated safe. The prosecutor has evidence that the defendant has cracked safes in the past. If the prosecutor is using that evidence to say he's cracked safes in the past, that makes it more likely he cracked the safe on this occasion, in other words, he has a propensity to crack safes, that's propensity, and we're in category three. However, the prosecutor could instead offer the evidence for a different non-propensity purpose. Here, the prosecutor could offer it to show that the defendant has the special skill necessary to crack a safe, and for that reason, it is somewhat more likely, that the defendant is somewhat more likely to have cracked the safe on this occasion. That is a non-propensity purpose and Rule 404B would allow the evidence to be used for that other purpose subject to Rule 403. So we have four categories of character evidence. We've already done impeachment and we'll treat that as impeachment rather than character evidence. We'll talk about Category 2, proof of character as an element, which is governed by Rule 405B in class. It is a small category. We'll spend most of our time on Rules 404A and B, which covered the use of conduct to prove propensity, Category 3, and the use of conduct for non-propensity purposes, Category 4. Let's move now to the rule itself, which says that evidence of a person's character or character trait is not admissible to prove that, on a particular occasion, the person acted in accordance with the character or trait. This is the prohibition in the rule and it's the core of Rule 404. As we saw at the beginning of the video, the terms character or character trait simply refer to a person's propensity to do something. Okay, so the rule is prohibiting use of evidence that a person has a propensity to behave in a certain way to prove that he behaved in that way on this particular occasion. Applying it to our safe cracker, you, I'm sorry, our, vi our, vi our assault uh, defendant, the rule is prohibiting evidence that the defendant is violent to show that he has a propensity for violence and thus that he was violent on the occasion when this victim was assaulted. Okay, let's look at the structure of Rule 404, uh, which also contains exceptions. It's a complicated setup, and I want to make sure you have a sense of how the rule fits together. Okay, Rule 404A prohibits using character evidence to prove propensity. Within 404A, there are two types of exceptions. In subsection 2, we get two exceptions for criminal cases. These are limited exceptions, but when they apply, you may prove the propensity only with opinion and reputation evidence. That part is governed by Rule 405. The second uh, uh, exception in Rules uh, 404A 
is for use of propensity to impeach. This provision simply directs you to rules 608 and 609. Again, we're going to treat impeachment with character evidence as, an, as part of the impeachment rules, and we're going to uh, uh, not, use, not consider that uh, as part of our 404 discussion. The second half of Rule 404 is 404B. This piece prohibits using specific examples to prove propensity. It also has an exception, uh, which allows you to use the specific examples to prove a non-propensity purpose. In class, we'll be looking at a multi-step process for handling or analyzing a 404B issue. Okay. This really falls within category four in our list of categories. Okay. I think it is helpful uh, to think about the rule this way. You'll want to use rule 404A when a witness is offering opinion or reputation evidence about the propensity. Okay. The, that evidence will be inadmissible unless it falls within one of the exceptions. To fall within one of those exceptions, it's got to be a criminal case, the defendant must have opened the door, and the evidence must go to a pertinent trait. We'll talk about the details of these exceptions in class. On the other hand, you'll want to use Rule 404B when the evidence is a specific past act. That evidence will be inadmissible to prove propensity, but if you can show a non-propensity purpose, then you'll be able to offer the evidence for that other purpose subject to Rule 403. There's a four-step analysis that, we'll, that we will discuss in much more detail in class. Okay. And finally, a note about Rule 405A. Rule 405A works in tandem with Rule 404A. Remember, Rule 404A makes most propensity evidence inadmissible. There are two exceptions, however, for criminal cases. When one of those exceptions applies so that propensity evidence is admissible, then you go to Rule 405A, which tells you what kinds of evidence you can use to prove the propensity or the character trait. Remember though, you cannot use 405A on its own. You must first qualify the evidence under an exception in 404A and only at that point does 405A come into play. Okay, that concludes our overview. Please uh, take the, twin, uh, the quiz on TWIN and I'll see you in class.